Hey everyone, it's time for another good, clean, fun round of coding uh, in Intro to R. So today we're going to be talking about factors, special values, and class coercion, which are all important features um, for any good R doers uh, repertoire to have. Um, this is also the final sort of Intro to R lesson um, that you'll have before your skill check if you're in my class. So um, pay attention. Uh, and let's get started. So, so far we've learned that there are a lot of different types of data and a lot of ways to organize them. Um, here's a numeric integer, complex logical and characters, are there are five atomic uh, data classes, uh, useful ways of organizing them, also classes, matrix, data frame, and lists. Um, but today we're going to look at one additional type of, uh, of class is, and that's a factor. And then we'll learn about special numbers that don't quite fit into these other types, uh, weird stuff that goes on that kind of needs its own thing, um, its own symbol, and its own thing to deal with inside of R. So uh, finally, we'll learn how to turn one type of data class into another type, which is often uh, important when it goes when you have to um, do calculations. And this is called class coercion. OK, so let's talk about factors. Factors. Uh, factors of class of data that's special to R. Um, it converts data into categorical data, which is also really pretty important for doing a lot of different types of um, a lot of different types of calculations and statistics. OK, so if we want to go ahead and do our colors, so we can do colors. White, white, blue, red, blue red and red you'll notice that i have uh repeated some of these it's red white and blue are the two uh, are the three sort of base factors that we have and we have some repeats among those things so if we say color dot fact uh we can use factors to or the the factor function to convert colors into factors and so when we do this back you'll see that uh, white, blue, red, blue, red, red uh, become factors, and it gives you the levels here of um, the different factors that you have. You can have blue, red, or white in this data set. So um, each category is represented by a name and encoded with integers. So here's the interesting thing about factors. Uh, they're encoded as actual integers. So depending on either the order of them or the order of how you've put them in or whether or not they're ordered, which we'll talk about in just a second, um, you it encodes it as a number, which of course is a lot less information and a lot less space uh, uh, memory required than um, writing out the full level. So if we do as numeric, Color.fact, we'll see three, one, two, one, two, two. And that corresponds, of course, with blue, red, and white being uh, one, two, and three in those levels. Right. Um, this saves a huge amount of memory when you have really, really large data sets. Of course, it's, it doesn't matter that much now because uh, we have this tiny data set. But if you have uh, you know, millions of observations, millions of rows in your data frame, say, um, this can end up saving a good bit of memory. OK, so creating factors is really easy. Like, say, we can do de novo with the factor um, with factor. So we're going to do one called pets factor. You'll notice that I'm giving it an input of a vector. OK, cat, squirrel. And I'm also giving this a character vector. OK, cat, dog. Why did I make this so long? Bear, cat, and fish. OK, so great. When we do our pets, we can actually look at this pets. Uh, well, we'll just do pets. OK, and it levels our bear, cat, dog, fish, and squirrel. OK, so those are the different types. Um, Again, take, it takes vectors as a list uh, for first argument. I believe that you can also do numerics as well, and that will convert into characters and then um, convert into factors from there. Uh, the text and numbers, um, the capitalization have to match exactly, OK? So if you're not going to match exactly, you're going to get two different versions of cat or two different versions of uh, dog um, in your levels, OK? So please uh, be careful about that. Factor also takes levels as an argument if you want to assign specific levels. Um, 
So you can do uh, an extra thing with levels. So if you want to go back here, you would use it as an argument levels equals C, and you could specify bear, cat, you know, blah, 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 and it will course those into that level, okay? Um, you can also use an existing vector with factors. So you can define your colors out and then, of course, turn, it into ve uh, tur turn that vector into a factor. Um, you'll notice that factors are only generated in vector form. So it has to accept a vector inside in as the first argument um, by uh, how factor is coded as a function. So factors can be either ordered or unordered. So what does this mean? So unordered factors are like blue, red, and white. Okay, so those can actually, they don't have, they ha don't have to be red, white, and blue, or blue, white, and red, and um, de depending on if you're in the US or in France, right? They are unordered. So they don't have any sort of ordered meaning um, other than uh, what you would arbitrarily give it. Um, ordered factors, however, do have uh, a meaning. So good, better, best, that implies an order um, that good is worse than better and better is worse than best and best is, is sort of the last ordered factor, okay? So you can create ordered factors also using factor and you just use the argument ordered equals true. Um, by default, ordered equals false, but you can set it as true and then add levels to specify that order, okay? So what we can do here is for pet.quality, we're gonna rate the quality of the pets that we already have. So dog, cat, squirrel, dog. Um, this of course is my own personal opinion. Um, dogs are great, cats are good. Um, a squirrel is maybe okay as a pet. Dogs are great again, uh, cats are good again. Dogs are great. Dogs are great. Uh, bears are probably pretty poor pets, is what I'm going to guess. Um, and then fish is OK. OK, so that's pet quality. Um, but what we're going to do here, uh, whoops, OK, so that's pet quality. But we're going to turn pet quality. So we're actually going to overwrite itself, which is something that you can do in R. So you can say, I'm going to reference this self as pet quality. We're going to assign the levels, OK, of uh, poor, OK, good, and great. OK, and then we're going to specify that ordered equals true. And so when we do that and we look at pet quality, what we can see is that it's assigning the, this is the, the base data um, of how you've assigned it. Um, these are the levels and you'll see that instead of just having a comma in between them, they actually have a greater than um, uh, or less than sign in between each of these factors to tell you the order of those levels, okay? Um, so here's the order of the levels. Um, Getting information from factors. Uh, one of the important things from factors you may want to get is levels. Okay, so do pet quality levels. Um, this will uh, return each of those levels to you. Okay, so the the uh, not just all of the the factor data, right? But the actual levels, the categories in which um, uh, which have been defined within that data. Okay, or those data. Okay, so levels pets. And uh, bear, cat, dog, fish, squirrel. Okay. Um, you can also for this for levels pets. Whoops. I'm trying to hit the up. Uh, if you would like to, since this returns a, a vector to you, um, you can also uh, specify at the same time by tacking on a square bracket which one of those that you would like to pull specifically. So if you're looking for the third um, level of, of pets, you can do dogs. If you do levels, pet quality, okay, and you want the, uh, what what is it, fourth level, um, which is great of pet quality, you can do that. Okay, so that's really useful. Um, and ordered levels, the levels are going to appear, uh, they're going to re be reported in the order that they're, uh, that you assign them. You can also asset, a access the elements of the factored uh, vector, the same as other vectors, okay? So, um, it, and so that we're not going to go over replacing elements or subsetting or anything like that, because all of that is basically just like a regular vector, okay? So it's just like a regular vector. Um, okay, so now I would like you to check your understanding yet again. 
um, by creating a data frame that contains a column of class characters describing something in your current surroundings. So look around your room and just pick like five or six things that you see, and then a column of class factors describing the colors of those items. Okay, so um, it's going to be each observation will be a thing. Okay, and so you'll observe the name of it and then the color of it. Uh, and then that second uh, column of color, I want you to be, I want, want you to make that a factor. All right. Oops. Okay. So go ahead and do it. Hit pause if you need to. This is building on our last lecture where we talked about data frames, right? So we're using a data frame to do characters and to do factors. And write a summary on that when you're done. See if your factors worked okay. Okay, moving on. When your data doesn't quite fit or isn't quite there, all right? So there are some sometimes numbers or non-numbers that pop up in data sets uh, and calculations especially. Um, they should be treated specially by R because they're not like normal numbers. They're not a numeric, they're not an integer, they're not a logical, okay? So if your data aren't those things, if that element isn't that thing, what do you do? They have, well, you can assign special values or a spe special values can be assigned to those elements depending on what type of special value you need. Um, an infinity, data not available, not, not a numbers, and null values are the four types that we're going to talk about right now. Infinity. OK, so infinity occurs when R is forced to limit the size of a number. Uh, when a number gets too large, an element gets too large, it's considered to R be to be infinite. Um, so this is the mathematical sim symbol for infinity, right? Um, it's represented by capital I, in, lowercase n, lowercase f. OK, that specific thing, if you try to overwrite that, R will be unhappy. Please don't. Um, so infinity is that you can have a positive infinity and a negative infinity. Positive infinity, of course, is just INF and negative is negative INF. OK, once an element is infinite, all operations on that element will result in another infinite number. Right. It's like playing that game when you were a little kid, like, uh, you know, I want to do this times two. Well, times three times infinity times double infinity. It, it, it's all just infinity, right? So anything you try to do to that number is just going to be an infinity other than overwrite it. If you divide a number by infinity, the result is zero, um, which you know, logically makes sense. Uh, R will also produce that, that behavior. If you can, you can check uh, an R object to see uh, if any element within it is infinite. Um, or finite. So finite means it's not infinity, right? So it's uh, sort of the inverse of both of those things are true. Um, it will, this returns the output is a logical for each element in that factor. Uh, if you would like to, to check that really fast, uh, let's see you have like this big vector and uh, you're just wondering to know like it's a million long, you don't want to like look at all of all the true false blah 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 blah, you can do is infinite your object and then around that do some Remember how some, uh, oh, we're going to talk about that in a second. Sorry, we haven't gotten to that. But you can do some on the outside of that, and that will show you actually the number of um, uh, infinite elements within that huge vector. Okay. And we'll talk about why that is in just a second. I'd forgotten we hadn't covered that yet. Okay. So that's infinity data not available. Um, when you have data that is unknown, uncollected, or otherwise not available, you want a special value to indicate that in your data set, right? You don't want to just put zero because zero means something. It means that it's not there, but it's not that it's not there. It's just that you didn't look or something was wrong with your calculation or something was wrong with the observation and you just want to throw it out, right? So um, uh, not available data, data not available, uh, R represents this as a special value in capital N, capital A, okay? So if you put capital N, capital A, it's going to treat it like data not available. Even if you try to like overwrite that, don't do that, okay? <laughs> Let it be. Pick something else to name it to. Okay, elements having NA will not accept any manipulation other than replacing that element, okay? So you can't multiply it, you can't divide it, you can't um, you need to take the square root of it or anything like that. R will completely ignore this element for you, all right, which is kind of good. 
Um, NA serves as a really useful placeholder. Again, if you just didn't have that observation for whatever reason, you couldn't figure it out or the data were just lost, you still need that placeholder, right? You can't just pretend it didn't happen. But at the same time, you want to not pretend like you did take data on it or not confuse anybody else that you did take data on it when you didn't. Uh, you can check for the presence of NA by using is.na, uh, which will return a logical for each element in that R object that returns NA, okay? Um, if you would like to, so there's some functions we'll talk about in just a second. There's some functions that um, don't like that NA in there and will return NA because you're trying to like, you know, like sum them all together and it returns an NA because it's like, well, you know, I can't do anything to this NA, it's, therefore I can't do anything to any of these. If you would like to omit any observation which has an NA, NA.omit is a great function for that. It's just going to remove all of the rows of your data frame um, that don't have uh, or that have an NAs and leave everything that's complete observation. Sometimes you don't want to do that. Be careful because even if the other observations are filled in, um, but it, if it has one observation, NA, it gets rid of the whole thing. Okay, so sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. But it's kind of cool if you do want that. Um, not a number. Okay, so when you perform a calculation that results in a value that's like literally not a number, it's <laughs> it's like infinity divided by infinity. We don't know what that is. Zero divided by zero. Like we literally don't know what that is. We don't know what that means. Um, we call that not a number. Okay, not a number. Uh, just like MATLAB is uh, represented as capital A lowercase uh, capital N lowercase a capital N. Okay, so this represents a not a number in your uh, in your element uh, element in in whatever uh, class you have. Elements having not a number will not uh, accept any manipulation other than replacing the element. Okay, R is going to completely ignore this. This is just like capital N capital A. Okay, but it has a different meaning. Functionally, they're basically the same. Okay, but N A and N A N. Uh, have different meanings. So it's best to leave that as NAN is, you know, some something wonky went down and it produced on a number versus NA where there should be an observation here, but we don't have it because it's not available. All right. So go ahead and stick to it. Um, you can check for the presence of non numbers by using is.NAN. All right. That again will return a logical for each element of our object. True if it does is not a number, false if it is a number. Okay. Null. Okay, so you're probably thinking at this point, like, why are there so many weird values? <laughs> and why do we need another one? Um, null indicates an empty entity. Okay, so it's a little bit different than NA. Um, an empty value, an empty vector, an empty matrix, something, an empty object, okay? Null is different than NA. Here's an example, okay? So I can create two vectors, one that has three NAs and one that has three nulls. And when you hit the hit the enter on each of these, what you get is a vector with NA, NA, NA. So it's holding each of those element placeholders. But what you get with nulls is just null. Um, it's just null, it's not, it's, it's empty, okay? This is an example of, this has three missing values and this has, is a single empty entity, okay? Even though I've said null three times, it's like three nulls is still just empty. Three empties are still, is still just empty. It's like you can give me a million empties in your car, but if you don't have, if your car fuel tank is empty, you're still not going anywhere, right? Um, check for null using is.null, okay? So that's great. Special values in practical use. All right, there's lots of different things going on. So you may think like, well, what does it matter? I'm so confused. Why are all these things different? Are they really different? How am I ever gonna use these things? Okay, so here's when to use each. First of all, infinity, don't enter that. <laughs> that's gonna be something that's calculated and uh, uh, indicates that something's gone wrong. Not a number, do not enter that, <laughs> okay? When you see these two, you know that something has probably gone amiss with a calculation or a function, okay? You're dividing by zero where you shouldn't be dividing by zero, okay? You have infinities, like all of these things are, are like generally not good. Uh, something in your asymptot asymptotics is blowing up, you know, like these, these things aren't good. You need to go back and check. Um, in a, when you don't have data, 
put an NA, okay? This is what you actually want to enter if you don't have, if you just have a missing observation, okay? And null, use this as a placeholder holder for entirely empty objects. So you want this object to show up, but you want it also to be empty, okay? Use null. You can overwrite null later, later so that's not a big deal. What it practically means is infinity null and NANs, these are almost always, R has done something and something's gone terribly wrong, you need to go back and check to see what went wrong, okay? So when I do this, I find a null as my output for some function, I'm like, whoopsies. <laughs> Something's gone sort of wrong. So you need to go back and debug it, okay? Uh, infinity and NAN are the same thing. Um, Sometimes you are thinking that you're dividing something, you have some big number, you're dividing it, maybe there's accidentally a zero and you're dividing something out. Uh, that's just a you know indication like, hey, go back and check to make sure that this is doing what you think it's doing. Um, and then NA is gonna be data missing. Uh, but sometimes, like I said, this will screw up some functions. So you, uh, a lot of these functions that it will screw up do have an argument, an extra option called na.rm, and it means remove NAs. Okay, so when you set this being true, uh, you can see here for mean of AVEC, it has uh, the position four is NA. Um, it will return this mean NA to you if there are any A's, NAs in this vector that it's trying to calculate the mean across. But if you say, well, I don't actually care if they're NAs, um, why don't you go ahead and remove them, go ahead and calculate what's the mean of what's there, um, it will go ahead and do that for you. Okay, so that's really useful. And again, if you would like to omit, you know, just clean an entire data set, get rid of all of the empty, uh, all of the observations or rows with NA, um, you can use that NA.omit, okay, to clean up those data. Um, I don't, I recommend doing that as a separate step. So like not doing that and then saving the data, but doing that as a cleaning step within a script. And we'll talk about why that's important a little bit later, but uh, preserving that original data is really, really important so that you can go back and see how things are cleaned and why things are cleaned later. Okay, so I have two scenarios for you for check your understanding. Um, these check your understanding, you notice are getting a little bit more complex as we go through. Uh, that's great, that's okay. Uh, but I want you to consider the following scenarios. First, you have a data set in a data frame, okay? So just a data frame with your data set. It's very large and you wanna know whether or not it has some missing data values. You'd like to remove those values so that you only have a complete set of observations. What would you do? You can either write some code to do this out or what we call pseudocode. It's code that's not intended to work, but show the idea of what you want to do. Um, or you can uh, or you can just describe what you would do in words. B, you have a data frame in which you use your own function to vectorize a calculation. When you look at the output, it is null. <laughs> what happened? What should you do? Again, don't you don't have to be really specific about it just tell me generally what you would do okay so pause here write out these two scenarios okay so we're going to move on to talking about our last topic today for which is class class and data type coercion <laughs> Okay, so coercion. Sometimes you need data types or classes to be converted to another class in order to run some function, right? Because sometimes these functions have really specific classes that they need to operate on. Um, converting one type uh, or class of data into another is called coercion. Um, coercion can happen automatically. And so when I talk about logical to numeric, a lot of uh, functions will actually do an automatic conversion from logical, which are just ones and zeros, right, to uh, integers or numerics in order to do some calculation. So sum is one of these things. Um, you can sum with, uh, uh, you can uh, produce sum just like I used in my previous example. Um, on a is.na, you can do sum across that vector, uh, that logical vector, and it will actually treat them like integers and then add them. And any of the places that are true will be one. And so then you'll get a total count of how many NAs or NA, NA, NAns are in your, uh, in your data set, okay? Sometimes you have to course data manually, and this is most accomplished with the as dot functions, okay? So as.character, as.numeric, as.integer, as.factor, as.logical, and as.data.frame, okay? So any of these will coerce some kind of data, if they can do it, um, into the as uh, 
as a, a, a following um, data type. Okay. Lists are a special case since they're often comprised of different members with different classes, right? And they're different links. So that can be a little bit more um, a little bit more complicated. As.list will coerce data into a list form, um, but unlist will often coerce list members into atomic vectors. This can be like good uh, or not good, what you want or maybe not what you want, <laughs> depending on kind of the behavior, the structure of the list and uh, the behavior um, that it's decided to do. So in our last, uh, uh, in our last, um, uh, little video, we talked about ability.cov as being um, sort of the, the data, ability.cov as being the data, example data frame for lists. And so here are the, the lists. Um, what you can do is use unlist to sort of unlist this data. So pull it out of a list. Uh, and so what you get is this as unlisted, unlist ability.cov. And so what you get as output is this. And so it's basically taking each one of these COV values, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, going down um, along the uh, each column along each row, and then plotting out the center, and then this last observation here, and just putting this as one big giant vector. Okay, so maybe that's what you want, and maybe it's not, it's unclear, but that uh, unlist will pull stuff out of a list for you. Okay, so which command can uh, which commands can accomplish the following coercions? A, a logical vector to a numeric vector, B, a numeric vector to a character vector, C, two vectors into a data frame, um, and D, a list into a vector. Go ahead and write out which of those functions we just covered may do the trick for you. Okay, and that's it. So you have an assignment 1.12 and 1.13, and no reading because the next time we meet, we are going to do our skill check. Okay, so our first sort of B-level activity, uh, which will have you integrate some of these things that you learn to demonstrate your basic competence, uh, your advanced competence in the skills that we've been doing so far. Okay, so until then, keep coding. Bye-bye.